Hello, this is Jessica Lynn of Jessica Lynn Original, and today I am going to go ahead and share a brand new cat Christmas card that I thought I would go ahead and design. I'm going to be using the JessicaLynnOriginal.com stamp set called Celine's Kittens. They are a 4x6 stamp set, and you can see there's quite a few different adorable kittens that come with that set. Um, I'm also going to be using this special Copic paper. It's a mini pack of paper and it's meant specifically for creating little pictures, images, or cards. So I'm going to go ahead and use the cat that's laying down. And let me just get out my ink and I'm just going to go ahead and stamp this all up. Now I try to make it a practice for myself that I always stamp it twice. And when I say twice, what I truly mean is that if this paper, for example, can hold two of them, I'm going to stamp two because in my experience, I have gone through and only done one and then I do something and mess up one of them with my coloring or whatever, but then at least I have one as a backup. Okay. And you can see how cute these guys look when we're stamping them. So let me just go ahead and put my clear stamp away. And they just come on a sheet so you can stick it right back away for storage so you don't have to worry about losing them. And then to clean it, I just used a little baby wipe and just cleaned it off. Now you might say, what the heck am I doing? I put a white sheet of paper over it and I'm drawing my own Christmas hat. Just a fun tip. You can do this for any stamp. So if you wanted to add a little hat, just draw one. And then I went through and as you can see, I'm just fussy cutting it out. I could have used my brother's scan and cut, but you know what? I just thought, you know what? I'll just cut it out manually with my hand. Um, but again, this is a fun thing I love to do with a lot of my stamps. I'll just draw like a little hat and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I am going to, once I get this little piece of the hat cut out, I'm actually going to cut some red cardstock. So I'm going to use it like a template, kind of like sewing. I'm going to use this as my little paper pattern to cut out the little hat. So let's go ahead and cut out the red part of that hat. And you can see, now you could have traced it on there. I just held it on and it just cut fine. So you can see I'm just cutting the red right out. Now the biggest trick is I've got a lot of cuts and coloring and everything else left to do. So make sure you put your hat somewhere that it will not get lost. I think I lost the hat and the little white pom-pom over the course of this card probably five or six times. So put it somewhere you won't lose it. So as you can see, I started coloring the bottom one. I felt it was a little too dark, so I started back over on the second one. Again, why I always stamp at least two so that I have a backup. I don't think the bottom one's bad, but I might color over it with a different color or something. It's a little too dark for what I was working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all his little shadows in and I'm gonna color in his ears. Now again, he's gonna get that hat, so part of this will get covered up, but I'm still gonna color it as though it will all be seen, just in case, because I'm not sure how much will or won't be. One of the tricks that I have when I color the eyes, because I love the eyes on this cat, I love doing a much lighter top part of the eye and then a little darker of the same shade at the bottom. It really gives the cat's eyes some dimension and makes them really stand out. Um, I think that it really, it just, the eyes pop. Now that it's been colored, you can already see they're just, it's like the cat is staring back at us. And I'm trying to keep his toy in kind of the red colors just because Oh, we'll just put that little hat so we can see what it looks like. Oh, that's going to be cute. That's cute. All right. So let's go ahead and take it to my brother's scan and cut. I don't have a die for this one, but I do have a template of all of the stamps that we are going to be publishing very soon. And you'll be able to purchase those. And what it is, is it's the cut files. So what you would do is you'd actually go to our website, purchase those cut files, and they work just like die cuts. You would run them just through your brother's scan and cut or anything that you can scan. And then it'll have the set sizes and then you'll just be able to use those as a cutting template. And we'll have more on that soon. But again, I use my brother's scan and cut and what I did was I stamped my images on there. And so I'm just scanning it right now. 
When it comes back, it's going to be reading what I've got, so I want to close up the cutting. And then once I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and let it find the file in the edge lines. And then I'm going to go ahead and let it put a small 0.04 border all the way around the image. I am just so happy with how these turned out. Now, again, I've talked about this before. I'm trying to maximize the life of my brother's scanning cut. And you can see on here that the stickiness is still there, but it just doesn't hold a sheet of paper on the mat as well as it could. So I just used the little pieces of tape in the corners and it holds it really well. And you can see it didn't permanently stay. Look at how cute this is. Oh my goodness. See, I love this. I love this because I was able to just plop them on the page. And look at how beautiful it added that perfect zero or point zero four all the way around the card, which I just think is practically perfect. You even cut out that little whisker. All right, so let's go ahead. And the next step is we have a lot of dies, die cutting to do. Um, I'm just going to clean up his eyes just a little bit. Um, another trick that I do have is with these eyes, just to make that white of the eye pop, I'll use a uniball. It's a easy little, it, it reminds me of whiteout in a pen. Um, I got them on Amazon and I'll just put sometimes the little white dot in there just to make it stand up just a little bit more. So you can see when I do this, watch how the eyes go from okay to it looks like the cat is staring right back at you. There, yeah, look at that. Look how cute. Oh my goodness. I love it. All right, so I'm going to speed this up a little just because there's a lot of stuff to get together. So these um, Umbrella Crafts wafer thin die cuts, they're the ones I got from scrapbook.com. They're okay. They're not perfect, but they cut well. So I'll, I'll continue to use them. Um, I am using the Woodland Wonderland for those couple of sheets of paper, and I got that from Hobby Lobby. And then I wanted some green. I wanted something. Oh, those are cute. I like that fun pattern, um, and that is out of another pack of paper called Botanicals, and that is also from Hobby Lobby. There's that cat. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to cut out two of these banners, and I want one size, and then I want something a little smaller, so I'm probably going to go down maybe like two sizes. And a good trick that I use, as you can see, I've got the card folded in half, just so I get an idea of size and perspective. Sometimes when you pull out your dies, you're like, oh, I'm going to use this huge die cut. And then you get your huge die cut and it's ginormous and it doesn't fit on the card. So a good trick is to go ahead and just actually have the card stock sitting there so that you can kind of lay it out with the die cuts and get a better idea of what it looks like. All right, let's just run it through. And I'm just doing it backwards so you can see a little better there. And this is going to be, and if you look, it has like almost like a burlap kind of fabric. So I really like that. 
Um, another suggestion is you may want to use a little bit of that same tape that I used um, for my brother's scan and cut to hold the die cut in place. The green one moved a little bit on me. Not horribly, but a little bit. And um, so you can see I'm just kind of testing it out, making sure it all looks good. We're going to run another one through because now we want that smaller banner. So we've already done three die cuts. Oop, got stuck. <clears throat> I used the wrong size too, so it didn't actually clamp it. Alright, let's see how this looks. Cute! Okay. So we've got our base, our first flag, and our second flag. And what I love about this is that it has a lot of detail. I wish that those little banners had that same stitched edge. I really like it. It looks so cute. So let's go ahead and start to assemble this card. And when I first started, I was like, oh, I'm going to put it on a white card base. And I just was like, I don't know. It's just too, it was just too white, stark white around the outside. And so I decided to see if I could find some craft paper. Because I have some white card base or I have the craft. And the sun decided to come out there. So now there's like a weird little sun glare up in the upper right hand corner. Sorry about that. It was rainy here in Milwaukee all weekend, so it was nice to finally have some sun. So you can see when I put it on the white versus the craft, I just love the way that looks. It's it, They're similar enough in color, but yet it really kind of pops. So I think we're going to use that. I'm just going to glue up the card. Let's put that on there, line it all up. And you can see with that little stitch line, it's so cute. Look at how cute that looks. I'm really liking this so far. All right. So let's get our banners all lined up. So we're going to choose our next size. And again, a good trick is just take a few minutes, go through and lay this out a couple of times. It's if you sew it all, it's just like that, you know, measure twice to cut once. Same kind of thing. I really like this paper. It's a little different. Oh, that's cute. I love the snowflakes over. So it brings in some of the holiday without being too much holiday. So I really like that. I always encourage you to sign the back of your card. It is your art. Um, even though you may have used stamps, die cuts by other companies, it's still your work of art. So it's a lot of fun when people get those cards. So the last step is let's go ahead and put that Christmas cat hat together. And this is where I wanted to get some red in there to incorporate Christmas. And again, like I said before, you can do this to any of your stamps. And then what I'm going to do is take a black ink pen and I'm just going to outline it so that it almost looks like a stamp or like I paper pieced it. So you can see how that looks. And now we're going to get out the little white. Um, one of the ideas I had here was to actually maybe use embossing powder and maybe make it look fluffy. But I like the way that looks. I'm pretty happy with it. Let's get that little white piece that I lost about 50 times. There it is. Yay! It's not lost anymore. It's part of the card. All right, and then what I'm going to do is, again, just go through and kind of clean up any of those little lines that might have gotten cut off. Just so that it looks nice and crisp and like it was part of the stamp. So you can see how that looks. And then I'm going to grab my glitter pens. I love the glitter pens. And we are just going to glitter up the hat. And at first I was just going to use the glitter to be shadows. So if you look, you can see I'm just doing some shadowing. And then because I didn't have any other glitter on the card, I decided that it, we are just going to make the entire hat glitter. And I really like the way that turned out. Now I did use a little bit of silver in the white fluff area. And it gives it just a little bit of dimension, which looks so cute. And it was funny because after I did that, I said, nope, we're coloring the whole hat red. But look at how cute he looks all sparkly. All right, yep, we're coloring the whole hat. It just needs it. The other thing I do like is that I used a textured paper for the hat. So when I went to color in the glitter, it really kind of, you can see it almost like soaked it in is the best way I can describe it. And it looks really cute. I did come back with a dark gray Copic marker to add back in those shadows so the hat had some dimension to it. So look at that. Look how cute. Sparkly hat. 
Alright, so to attach the cat, I'm going to go ahead and use foam risers, my personal favorite. I'm only going to use a couple, just toss them on the back. And we're going to center the cat right there. Perfect. Oh, perfect, perfect. So once I got that far, I decided we needed some kind of small sentiment of some sort. And so I was digging through my box and I found a lawn fawn. It is a very small... Oh my goodness, probably like two by two and a half small stamp set. And you're supposed to use it for Christmas tags. So like, you know, um, to and from and, you know, don't open till Christmas, whatever. But all the stamps in there are extremely small. So I thought, you know what, that's about all the space I have for this card. So there it is. You can see how cute it is. Super small. So I took Happy Holidays and I'm just going to ink that on up. And at first, my initial instinct was to center it, and then I'm like, no, 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 where do we want it? No, too high. So I decided to put it kind of bottom right off center, because everything else is so symmetrical. I thought it would just kind of add a little extra to it, So, and it does. I love it. I love it. I think it's just so simplistic, but it really shows off, you know, if you put together some good papers and you stack them, look at how gorgeous that it can kind of frame out that stamp. So I really like it. I really like all the detail. And you can see how that the eyes, I tried to match the color of that green background. Really happy with it. Look at all the dimension, nice die cuts, some nice crisp edges. Well, I just wanted to take a moment again and say thank you so much for watching our video. Uh, we do have a new goal for this year, and that is to get to 1,000 subscribers. We've got some fun prizes if we can get there. And I do thank you for watching us. Now, you might say, how do I subscribe? There is a Brentwood that I'm going to pop up. Just click on him, hit subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, and you'll get notifications whenever we upload new videos. I'm going to pop up two more for you to watch. Thank you again, and have a great day.